Okay, so hi everybody. Thanks for being here today. Um, my name is Rafael Ferreira and I'm the CEO of uh, Innovance, which is a French company specialized in open cloud technology. Uh, I'm here today to give you more visibility regarding the financial aspect of uh, OpenStack project. So I'm 35 years old, living in Paris, and I have a beautiful son. I'm running in events since uh, 2008 with the best partner ever, Nicolas Marshall, which is the CTO of Innovance, and uh, Pierre Monin, which is the COO. What we do? So we are based in uh, Paris and Montreal. We are uh, focused on open cloud technology like OpenStack. We are also a core contributor on the Ceph uh, storage and Puppet. We are a member of the foundation. And we are an active contributor to the code. Uh, like for example, we created Sailometer one year ago for the metering and billing in OpenStack. We package OpenStack for Debian. We created the uh, Puppet module for OpenStack, and etc. And uh, in the Grizzly release, we are proud to be the seven biggest contributor in this release. And after that, we provide several types of services like design, build, run of critical platform. So, um, today we will talk about how, how you can reduce your IT cost from 30 to 60% uh, by using uh, OpenStack. To illustrate that, uh, let me introduce you to Ed. Oh, hello, Ed. Ed is a 35 years old man living in uh, London. He created adoptman.love in 2008 and is a successful startup. The company grows fast and there are now 150 people and they generate uh, 50 billion in uh, revenue. So Adoptomed is a dating website dedicated to women. Uh, you know, they can choose a man they want and they put it in the card and that's cool. <laughs> it's a really website in France, but uh, I have to change the name. Um, because they want to grow faster and open new branch in several countries, Adoptomen need to become more agile and more scalable. They decided to outsource the hosting, but they hired an internal team to manage the platform. Uh, Adoptomen have a seasonal activity. They need twice more servers three months by year. And they also have a continuous increase of their audience, which is very cool for us. This is a typical pattern for this type of activity and for any business website. Here is the current uh, architecture of adoptman.lab. Because there are pure players that decide to split the platform in two data centers in London. They are using standard technology, HP and Cisco for the equipment, Varnish and Nginx for the web and the caching, PHP, MySQL, MongoDB for the application and the database, NFS for the storage. And they also started to play with Puppet to automate the configuration of new machines. Here are the costs of the current architecture. They are 80 servers, 4 load balancers, 8 firewall, 4 NFS equipment for a total monthly cost of $20,000 per month. They are hosting two data centers in London, Equinix and uh, Telecity. And they uh, use the one gig internet access for a total monthly cost of $15,000 per month. There are five engineers in the team to manage this architecture. With an average of $100,000 per year and per, per, and per person, the monthly cost to manage this platform is about $40,000 per month. So the global cost, actually, for this architecture is around $75,000 per month. But what's the problem? That's work, but Ed has several problems. To launch a new service, the average length is around three months. And uh, you know, in this uh, area, the competition is very strong. So it's a critical problem for Ed. 
Because they need to install manually new dedicated equipment, the developers have to wait four weeks to have new environment to play with. There is a complete separation between the dev team and the ops team. Um, the dev team have no access on the machine, no access on the operating system. This is a major problem for the dev and the test platform because they spend too much time waiting and building new environment to play with. Last week, <coughs> Ed was invited to a great TV show on the BBC to talk about uh, Adaptamen. In only one hour, the traffic increased by 300%. Even if the code is well optimized, after 10 minutes, the website failed. Ed felt that he lost 20,000 new potential customers for his website. He missed its fantastic opportunity and degrade his brand image. So Ed has now several motivation, and he can summarize this expectation in four categories. Be free of its destiny, probably most the, the most important things for a critical business platform. We will explain this later. Be able to massively scale. Be aggressive in terms of investment. And be interoperable. This word is too complicated for a French guy, so I will tell it in French during all the presentation. Interoperable. Of course, we can tell that there are many other motivations, like quality of service like features, but for me, everything is in this slide. So let's have a look. First of all, you don't have the sex same expectation depending on your size. If you are a small player on the local market, you can choose between two types of strategy. For a time to market reason, you will be looking for a package solution like cloud in a box to start fast. And for a niche strategy, you will be looking for a specific uh, solution for a specific type of market. For example, cloud for SaaS provider, cloud for gaming, cloud for e-business activity, anything else. If you are a big player on the global market, we need a cloud framework because you absolutely need to drive your roadmap. You will be the custom solution to fit exactly to your needs. This is a way following by Ed for adoptman.love. OpenStack can address both of these two needs, being a package solution with for example, Python Cloud or Nebula or Stack Ops, and being a framework with specialized integrator like Innovance. As I said, OpenStack is a framework. At Innovance, this is the main reason why we chose OpenStack two years ago. All that you can imagine in terms of infrastructure, you can make it with OpenStack. This is the reason why I resume the expectation of Ed in only four categories. Being sure of your destiny allows you to build different type of platform. High-end cloud with high performance, high availability, complex network, high-end support. Low-cost cloud with cheap hardware, flat network, very aggressive price. Cloud storage for block or object storage, massively scalable and S3 compatible. Or HPC cloud with compute pizza box or bar metal provisioning, rendering the workload or specific scheduler. So the question is, how do you see the life? Like this, buy a software and build the same cloud than your competitors? Or, excuse me. Okay. Or, uh, like this. No, being special, being unique, increase your creativity. I think you can find my preference. I know, you know, cloud data centers, network, blah, 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 it's boring for most of us. But you can change that and use a framework to really innovate on this exciting market. The second expectation is to be able to massively scale. So, sure, it's very easy. But sorry, I have no money right now because I start a new activity. I know that because that was, it was my case when I started Innovance five years ago. 
and it was the same thing for head. The point is, you must be able to massively scale, but you miss, must be able to start small. Even, even if you are a big player, it's better to provision the infrastructure progressively to minimize your power consumption and to get the new generation of hardware. And for that reason, OpenStack is the right solution because you don't need to follow unique reference architecture. You can start small or use your existing hardware and evolve with your business activity. So my favorite part. The this is the financial part of the presentation, one of the two financial parts, so I'm sure you will enjoy my English level in this topic. So you want to build your own private cloud. Of course, you will need to be excellent in terms of quality of service, innovation, and support. But you also must to be competitive in terms of investment, because even if you really want to play with OpenStack, even if it's the currently the hype in the IT industry, you must be in line with the market. I think it's not necessary to present AWS in this session, right? They are good, they are very, very good. Personally, I love this company. They innovate, they provide large-scale infrastructure, they are present in several countries, and they reduce their price three, two or three times per year. As you can see, they can provide you a medium-sized VM for 17 cents per hour, around $120 per month. Rackspace, another player, they also run a public cloud with an aggressive price and a very high-end fanatical support. They are most, most expensive than AWS, but they are focused on quality and performance. A new young player in the infrastructure market Google, you probably never heard about this company, but they can address specific market for compute workload. This infrastructure is based on their homemade hardware and on a very aggressive price. So as you understand, on this market, there is a real price war. So is it interesting to build your own OpenStack private cloud? Quick analysis. Imagine your Target cost for a medium-sized VM is 14 cents per hour. With that price, we'll be in line with the market. For this price, you can propose to your team a VM with two CPU, four gig of RAM, and 100 gig of disk. We estimate that we can run 20 VM per node in a standard period, sometimes more, sometimes less, but 20 is a medium number. Based on that, you need to achieve a monthly cost per node of approximately $2,000 per node and per month. So imagine you want to build a big private cloud, huge private cloud with the total capacity of 4,000 VM. So it's a huge one. You will need to build your infrastructure with 200 physical nodes, 20, by 20 VM by node. Maybe a secondary storage with the block to provide volume to your, uh, to your users, to your team. It can be a NAS like uh, NetApp or a distributed storage like Ceph. You will need a high-end security system. Keep in mind that the security is a big part of your investment. So you must to protect yourself from an external threat, but you also must protect yourself from an internal threat. And uh, it's uh, certainly the most difficult things to do. You will need network and load balancing, certainly in hybrid LAN, with the one gig and 10 gig for the, for the storage, and a minimum of one gig of your, for your internet access. And you also need an information system and several production tools like help desk, monitoring, backup, uh, automation, stuff. So we can discuss, discuss about the number, but based on my experience, the approximately price for that is around $80,000 per month. So now you have your platform, it's great. You will need some uh, rack and transit, and you also need some good guys to do the job, around 10 guys. So your global direct 
cost is around $250,000 per month. Based on the capacity of 4,000 VM, your monthly cost per node is around $1,200. So to resume, to be competitive with the leader of public cloud infrastructure, you need to target a maximum cost of $2,000 per node and per month. As you see with OpenStack, you can make it. You need to optimize your design. You need uh, to have a good team or to find the good partners, but it's possible. So what about proprietary solution? What, if, what about if you need to buy license, support specific reference architecture to do that? Last thing to understand, if you want to build a private cloud, your customers are everywhere customer or users. So be interoperable. Your customers are everywhere. You will need to distribute your application on several platforms, maybe your OpenStack cloud and uh, other public cloud. Your audience is unpredictable, so you will need to be able to scale fast and it's not sure you will have the capacity on your private platform. So think hybrid. Be interoperable, make your life easier. Help your team to easily move the workload between private cloud and other public cloud. OpenStack is the best way to do that. You can provide open APIs, you can guarantee the reversibility, you can be compatible with AWS, Rackspace, HP Cloud, and this is the best way to simplify your team life and allowing them to be more agile and more reactive. So for Ed, what is the, 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 the bill now for his new platform? He decided to move to OpenStack and create a private cloud hosting hosted in two data centers. So that's okay. Here is the architecture designed by the Adoptman uh, team. You know, to do that, uh, they have took advice through the community and uh, through a fantastic and amazing startup name, uh, Innovance, I think, uh, something like that. So this architecture is split into data center because this is a business critical application, as I said. Instead of having custom server by function, they decided to build a pool of identical server, same configuration for all the platform. They also decided to give up NFS and to build two cloud storage platforms. One block storage platform for the database and one object storage platform for all the media and unstructured data. For the first one, they choose Ceph. And for the second one, they, ch they choose uh, OpenStack Swift. So, um, Regarding the need to be more scalable and more distributed, they have implemented uh, Sedexis Global Load Balancing, allowing them to redirect all the users on the appropriate platform. It could be their OpenStack Private Cloud or any uh, public cloud like Eno Cloud, Rackspace, or AWS. So, Ed have big ambition, and he knows his traffic will increase in the next few months. So <coughs> for, for that, you need 500 virtual machines distributed on 30 physical nodes. If you need more compute resources, you will use a public cloud. That's it. In terms of storage, adopterman need 40 terabytes of block storage and 40 terabytes of object storage. And because all of data are replicated three times, they have to provision at least 120 terabytes for each storage. This is a detailed bill for the infrastructure and the, and the hardware. So depending of your contract with uh, HP, Dell, or IBM, or Cisco, it will be something like that. You have four rack, you have one gig of internet transit, you have a hybrid LAN, in 10 gig for the storage and one gig for the web server. 
You have a global load balancer. This is a SaaS solution named Selexis. You have four load balancers, the open source one. You have 30 OpenStack compute servers. You have five OpenStack object storage servers, five OpenStack, five safe block storage servers, and 10 management servers. So with our existing team at uh, Adoptemen, our total monthly cost will be around $70,000 per month. To be more comfortable, you can also add an optional support contract between $5,000 and $10,000 per month, depending on your SLA requirement for OpenStack and Ceph. So it's a quick comparison between several solutions. So on the infrastructure cost, OpenStack wins the price war because it's allowing you to use your existing hardware without specific requirement. The density in terms of number of VM per node is good, 20 per node, 25 per node. In his, in his existing platform, Ed had, a prob had, Ed had a problem of consolidation. He used too much server because he has, he has dedicated equipment to specific function. And also because this platform has increased with the time. Another problem was that all the servers were not virtualized. In comparison with a public cloud like AWS, for 500 VM at a medium price of $150 per month, including transit, snapshot, etc., the difference is significant. You have a maximum flexibility, no investment, so it's clearly a good solution, but it's more expensive in the long term. Regarding VMware, I've used uh, this morning the TCO calculator on uh, VMware.com. And in my point of view, the cost of the license is not the biggest cost in the VMware architecture. It's significative but the main difference is on the reference architecture. To be able to use all the features of VMware, you will need some SAN equipment, you will need a fiber channel network. So for 500 VM on two data centers, you should invest at least twice on your architecture and on the license. Regarding the team, uh, it's very interesting because in this case, Ed don't have the critical mass to reduce the number of employees ded dedicated on the IT operation. If you want to provide 24-7 service, you need at least five, seven engineers. Ed can start with five people because even if the architecture is ready for 500 VM, he don't need to hire now. We estimate that uh, for that size, um, that size of project, the, the team is the same for each scenario, VMware or AWS or standard platform. Even for AWS, as I said, to provide a 24-7 service on the application layer, you need at least five people. And in this particular case, you can reduce your monthly cost by outsourcing the management of your cloud. The economy in this case will be 25% higher. So where are the other savings? Between 15 and 50% uh, of saving, just to start is great, but I'm sure we can do more. So this is a current organization uh, of the majority of large companies in France. It's a basic team, uh, but we have typically two teams, the developer team and the operation team. I'd like to draw three lines. The first one is a metal line. Uh, under this line, it's all about data center, physical network, and stuff. After, we have the oper op operating system line and the application line. Currently, 
Under those three lines, this is the IT bastion. Don't touch my machine. Don't touch everything. And this is the old way to do things. Whatever you are in the private cloud or in a public cloud, you have to reconsider the way the developers use the infrastructure. This is the way you have to reconsider your team if you want to maximize the value of your new cloud Christmas gift. Because as you know, the profit area is not in the infrastructure side. You have to give more autonomy to your developer and if you, if you want to innovate faster. Keep in mind that infrastructure is just a tool, a tool to do something to create value or to de develop new business. It's just a tool. We could take several hours on this topic, but there are just a few concepts you should keep in mind or to explore to increase the value of your OpenStack cloud. The first one is uh, infrastructure of a as a code through the API and uh, by hiring DevOps engineer. This is man versus machine. The, the goal is to automate, automate, automate. Second one is continuous delivery. To have a good time to market, and days instead of months, you have to be able to release every week or every day. To do that, you need agile test dev platform. So test dev environment ready to launch in a few minutes with, for example, Hit, or Puppet, Chef, Jenkins, etc. Design for failure. The infrastructure will fail. You have to deal with that. So explore Chaos Monkey project and design your architecture to replace than repair. Auto scaling. There are several projects in the OpenStack ecosystem around that. Uh, one is incubated in uh, Sailometer for the CloudWatch. And you can also work on Chef or Puppet and the APIs to achieve the auto scaling. And if you are a global audience, um, to target your global audience in several countries and to scale, you need to uh, practice modular design in your software development and also in the design of your architecture. So to resume this session, keep in mind that when you address the financial part of your cloud project, you must work on two areas. The cost of the infrastructure and direct saving. The savings are always pretty amazing with an OpenStack project. And the profit you can increase by improving your agility and your reactivity. It could be huge. Um, how much uh, would you value having three months of head start on your competitors? 10%, 50%, 300%. Think about that and uh, thanks. If you have questions, we have 10 minutes. <laughs> Go. A question? You know all the numbers? It's okay? Perfect. Yeah. Um, Instead of Gluster. Like Lovestep is your clustering file system, or did you consider other clustering files? Yeah, but uh, Gluster is not a, a, a block storage, I think it's a file system storage, no? Distributed file system. And uh, we choose, uh, we are very involved in the Ceph project because uh, the design is pretty amazing to be able to have object storage and um, block storage and maybe after NFS in the same cluster and uh, to allow us to manage this cluster depending on the customer needs. And in terms of performance, Ceph is pretty amazing too.
You have a question? Yes? I saw no things, so go. Uh, I think uh, we will release some performance testing in the next few weeks on our website and uh, with Ink Tank. Uh, we have a big Ceph cluster actually in France and uh, we developed some performance tool homemade by using some uh, tools like a Tung or open source solution like this. And I think we will publish some results in the in the few weeks. Yes. Your your uh, cross comparison as Ed keeping the same staff regardless of which solution you chose. Yeah. In your experience, is that a realistic? Uh, for a startup, yeah. Not for a large company. This is uh, one of the biggest problems we have uh, currently with some of our customers. Uh, they, they, they have an IT team which uh, manage physical machine, physical network, etc. And um, they have to rethink their job and it's one of the most difficult things to do actually in, with our large customer. Uh, like I say, in, in another session, we have uh, the. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the, the syndicat, the syndicat of France. It is a very powerful organization to protect the right of the um, employees, which is very, very good. But it takes time to change uh, anything in a, in a company in France. So. <laughs> We, we don't have uh, training for this kind of, uh, of change management. It's just the beginning in the, in the Europe. And as I said, the, the problem we have right now to accelerate the development of OpenStack in Europe is not a technical problem. We have the technology, we know how we can implement the technology. It's okay, it's about people. And we are not ready yet. How does that performer compare to the fix for all the employees? This is this is on top of the So Shmuel is uh, one of the senior developers at uh, Innovance, he's a core developer on Swift. Okay, another question?
Okay. Thank you, everybody.